last left our intrepid heroes, they had fallen into a pit that had opened up uh, near the island that they had found themselves on, where there was a cultist hideout. Uh, just for clarification, because this has come up before, I feel like since Kego is entirely made of uh, manufactured parts and has absolutely no reason to have any kind of gender, Kego does use they, them pronouns. <laughs> So all we're, right. all, we're so, all working well, on yeah, it. Yeah, we're, look, we're, we're getting better. We're getting better. Yeah. We're, we're working on become allies to our, our robot friends. As the three of you fall down the long and gaping chasm, <laughs> you feel... <laughs> no. Sorry, problem, can Nicole? you describe this chasm in a little more detail? Like, what is the Would humidity of this chasm? I would describe it as moist. <laughs> I would describe it as maybe musty. Mm -hmm. um, Are, is there, is there any kind of foliage growing just over <laughs> this chasm? And can you describe that foliage? <laughs> well, you see, there was, there, was, there was a rock island in the area at the tip. We could call that the metaphorical uh, the clitoris, if we will. <laughs> would you describe the foliage as thatched? <laughs> Uh, I, I can't tell you what kind of trees are on there, whether it's maple or walnut or birch. <laughs> or mahogany. Or mahogany, but I'm sure there's some on there. Before you land and splat yourselves all over the, the ground you see fast approaching, a gust of warm wind kicks up in the chasm, slowing you down. Are we, are we splatching on the ground just in front of each other? Or did we go to like <laughs> like secluded corners to do this? <laughs> I won't have any of this. I won't have my very serious story, very serious, Kelly, undermined by your japes and jesters. Well, you told me you weren't sure you had an hour of content, and I promised <laughs> you we would extend the timeline with this. So. Uh, but instead, you just land with a soft thump on a pulsing and Would you say a evil. soft yet gentle, or a firm yet gentle thump? <laughs> yes, a firm yet gentle coercing you if you will mm. uh that uh, the the mass you land on appears to be flesh hell yeah and it pulsates and vibrates like an active hell organ yeah beating the life essence of a struggling being <laughs> good lord <laughs> the open chasm of space <laughs> i appear to have landed on a fleshy area and i have splashed please allow five to ten minutes until I am prepared to operate again. <laughs> so is uh, uh, Pego has a he has the ability to to, to sample uh, like DNA and stuff, right? With your with your arm. You Affirmative. Just, you could just jam it down. And sorry, the, who the has who seat. has the ability to sample it? <laughs> they have the ability. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Pego. Pego has. Did I did I did I say he? I thought I was I was oh, talking to him in the sure second did. person. Um, <laughs> talking to who in the second person? So Pego, you <laughs> can you sample uh, to see what kind of being we're dealing with here? Can you drill right down in there? And I forgive you for your missteps in using pronouns. I understand you have been playing a lot of Hogwarts Legacy lately. <laughs> Sorry, what was your question? I wasn't really paying attention. I want, I want you to jam your stick down into the flesh and see what it is. How do we make this happen? What do I have to roll? On it. And I jam. Now I will remind that this is not like my R two D two arm is not the appendage that I peg with. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so I jam the very like sharp angular R two D two arm into the soil to sample it. The soil, you say? Well, into okay, into the surface that we are standing on. Yes. All right. I need you to roll a strength, Kelly. Oh, do oh, what the fuck? Are you kidding me? Have I ever mentioned to any of you that I hate technology? I hate it more than anything else in the goddamn world. I was curious that you chose to be a robot for this adventure. Considering I, 
because we live in imagined future where the pegging robot just fucking works. It works as intended, <laughs> and there's no fucking bullshit. You turn the pegging robot on, and it fucking pegs you. That's how technology works, right? <laughs> yes, of course, yes. God, I spent, like, it took me 40 minutes to write an absolute fucking Nobel Prize-worthy piece of erotica, and it took me, like, two hours to get this stupid audio video set up right, and then it still died. Well, you better roll your strength roll. You watch me roll my strength roll, you fuck. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I am normal at strength. Here we go. All right. So five. So if you remember correctly, Pego, uh, you had damaged your uh, your arm last uh, last session. Oh, fuck. And thus, it, you don't have enough power to penetrate the fleshy insides of whatever you're standing upon. So instead, the flesh just gives for a while and then springs back. And the entire cavern shakes as if trying to... Like a cow shakes off flies. Just a shudder, basically. Sure. So that's what happened with my R2-D2 arm. But since I keep mentioning it, I would like to try and kind of gently massage my pegging appendage into it. Okay. Uh, let's see here. What do we get rolling for that? I, was say, I guess if this if this doesn't if this doesn't work, <laughs> I have I have another option that we can use if the pegging is unsuccessful. Reroll sensuality. Who made this character sheet that doesn't have sensuality as a stat? That's my question. I know, right? Right. Uh, let's see. Let's let's just uh, we'll give you a. Give you a bonus to another strength roll here. We'll give you a strength roll plus two here. Bonus to strength. Is this how you gently massage things, Josh? Yes, yes. You got to get it I nice think, and deep. I think this is more of an intelligence uh, roll. You got to know how to so do it. so many things. It could be agility. Could it could be agility. Be gently wisdom. massaging. You know, they say that wisdom is the most erogenous stat. Say that strength... Of getting that nice deep massage in is what you need to do for. This creature is a sapiosexual, so the wisdom is, is gonna be the key to get in there. <laughs> okay, well, I will defer to the GM because I would never try to argue in rules lawyer a GM. So what am I rolling? You're rolling strength. With the plus two bonus. This fucking bullshit! Oh! I got a two. <laughs> oh! Now I take the better of the two rolls, right? So, that's a flat-out botch, and I don't think we've actually had one of those in these games so far. Only in the jam. Oh. So, if that didn't work, I want to use my cutlass to cut out a little sample, and I can just give it to Pego to All right. test. Well, before you do that, we have to deal with the consequences of the botch here, because it's not often that we get snake eyes. <laughs> so, Pego, as you attempt to gently massage your pegging appendage you lose grip on your treads and plummet face what would be face first onto the ground onto the fleshy ground and you feel your pegging appendage bend oh. well it by pegging no appendage bend. yeah yeah oh no you can no longer put it back into its storage compartment. It is now so, out. I, as I attempt to, oh wait, I don't, I think we've established that I can't write myself. Yeah, I know you're stuck Error. right now. <laughs> Please assist me in returning to my upright position. <laughs> um, that's actually called a penile prolapse for the record. Oh well, there you go. Well, I was I was gonna bit. I was gonna ask if if robots can suffer from Peroni's disease. <laughs> I guess they can. So. What is Peroni's disease? That's the that's the official name for having a bent penis. Oh, I know this not if from this personal experience, prolapse, but then consider me but, anti lapse. <laughs> but there are there are TV commercials that come on sometimes for some. It's like ask your doctor about this medicine. I guess it unbends your penis. I don't know what it does. Um, but ask your you do have about insane an TV commercials iron in the US. that you heat up on your stove. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that'd be like Looney Tunes style if they had to deal yeah. with it. They would... 
Like, it's not a, not a theme that they cover, but you know. <laughs> anytime I feel like this mostly happens if I'm like pirate streaming hockey, but if I watch an American feed, it's like just 15 commercials of like, if you have been seriously injured by this untested pharmaceutical, mm -hmm. call this personal injury lawyer. It's just every commercial yeah. on TV is what props <laughs> in your economy. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Absolutely love it. So uh, are you guys going to help old, uh, old Pego out there? I yeah. Guess there. yeah. We, just, we just have to lift him up. Yeah. You just got to help him up. Lift who up? Them. Lift, lift them up. Them up. <laughs> We're going to lift them up. All right. I'm not going to get a check on that. You just, you upright okay. pego, and then you see that their pegging appendage is bent. So I, well, did, do they see that? Because I feel like the first thing I would do when I flip up is attempt to like rotate. You know, it's like if you're uh, a, a, maybe an adolescent who has wet themselves or had an unforeseen bodily function, <laughs> you just, you want to face the wall and be like, oh, nothing's happening. You could curl so up like a pill bug. <laughs> If you I'm want to still try pretty to boxy. It. I don't <laughs> think I could curl up like a pill bug, but I just kind of want to like rotate away before <laughs> they can see my bent appendage. Then that's fine. Yeah, yeah. You do that. You look away. Oh, I do it successfully. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Are you sure? I also no never mind. Wow, I sure love looking at this horizon. Uh, thank you for helping me up. I am going to look in the other direction for a minute. And I think I want to attempt to retract my pegging appendage, like <laughs> into its port. I'll, yeah. Well, roll me an agility, Kelly. Let's 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 <laughs> let's, let's roll an agility on this. Yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll I'll take that. There's no way I can get three bad normal rolls in a row, right? You think that, but I've played a lot of tabletop. Hmm. Five. Yeah, that's not too. that's yeah, it's not adequate enough to uh, get the appendage back into into its port. It just sort of glances against it and doesn't doesn't retract properly. Is there anything around me? Like, are there maybe any I don't know blankets laying around? There's no blankets here, just chasms of flesh in all directions. <laughs> okay. So I guess I have to think about, I have to hedge my bets in terms of who I want to, who I'm most concerned about being embarrassed in front of. And uh, I think it was, I think it was Helm McKeelstern that I was starting to have a connection with, right? Yes. Yeah. So I'm going to turn to uh, Whaleback Willie. Admiral Captain Willie, would you come confer here for a moment? We need to talk about uh, Ensign McKeelstern's surprise birthday party. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. And I like kind of blush and turn away. <laughs> yeah, okay. so I, I pull Whaleback Willie aside and I'm like, uh, Admiral Captain Willie, I must confess that I appear to have caused damage to a very important appendage. Do you have some sort of garment that I may cover myself with until such time as we can reach a maintenance department? Um, I I will take off my my highly decorated jacket and I can give that to to <laughs> Pego to cover his shame. Their Thank shame. Thank you. <laughs> Their shame. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay. so i mean i guess i'm just gonna cover my shame <laughs> and uh in this jacket and or just... or maybe i could just take off one of my little ribbon medals and and you could drape it i was gonna say <laughs> what about your tricorn hat <laughs> no that that's that's mine that's that has to stay on at all <laughs> time. <It is> mine <laughs> the tricorn hat stays on during sex <laughs> Okay. Okay. So, am I am I covered? Uh, yeah, you are now covered. Yeah. So I try to play it cool. Wow. Now, I am so glad we had an impromptu exchanging of clothing, and you are now wearing my and my. I guess my eye things kind of probably move back and forth. <laughs> and oh man, do I have anything I can? I don't think I could pull off having clothing. I guess I owe you, and I owe you on. 
clothing. I promise I have a very cool wardrobe in the ship hold. <laughs> Think nothing of it. Happy to help. <laughs> it's not the first time I've seen someone's appendage. Uh, I don't damaged. know what you are talking about. <laughs> my appendage is in excellent condition. <laughs> Uh, we, you know, we have been planning birthdays for a long time. Perhaps we should ask Ensign McGillstern what to do next. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I don't know what this thing be that we'd be standing on. Oh, thank you, my love. Oh, okay. Gross. <laughs> I just got an ice cream delivery. I say, Yar, <laughs> I... I don't know what we'd be standing on, but it seems to be made of flesh and probably alive. Um, so I am going, I would like to try to use my special ability to pierce it with me eye. All right. So just a sec here. This could backfire so hilariously. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Literally. You're doing your special talent, which means you get a plus Sorry, two. Sorry, I really roll. hate to interrupt, but like, is it possible, Nicole? Just a small note. Can you crinkle that wrapper like a little closer to directly in front of the? Yeah, that's perfect. Oh, that's, that's peaking. Perfect. That's peaking bad. <laughs> Nicole, Can please you fully, stop. <laughs> fully envelop the microphone? Oh no! Don't do that. In the wrapper, yeah. Just just put it on like a. <laughs> oh, gross! Should yeah, I have that, that with please. ASMR going on while we were reading our. Uh... Like, eroticas. Instead, instead of the foam, <laughs> we could use we could use wrapper. Instead. Oh God! Yeah, let's see. Anything that blocks sound, it's all the same. Uh, since uh, since you're using your unique talent, you'll get a plus two to your roll here, and uh, let's get you to roll. Hmm. Hmm. I don't want to keep using strength. The dice so, towns sound too good. Can you just roll the wrapper somehow? Yeah, I can totally just, do that. Just roll the wrapper onto some sort of flat surface and they write a bunch of numbers on it and let's uh let's say let's say uh roll your speed. Um how am I for speed? Mm -hmm. Um oh, I'm bad at it. You're bad at yeah, it. Yeah, I it? noticed in the last 30 seconds how bad you are at speed. <laughs> okay. So I got a nine and I got a six. All right, so we have to take the lower of the two because you're bad and uh, plus two, so that's still an eight. So puffing your cheeks out and taking a big breath, you fire that eyeball and it strikes into the ground bursts the sight of impact and bounces back nicely into your hand. Lovely. Yep. As you're doing that, a gush of clear fluid erupts from the hole that your oh, eyes... Did you say is it's a sticky Is it, it so sugary <laughs> Like white came out? It's out stringily. Spume. <laughs> Why stringily? <laughs> Spoons down her inner thighs. It's it's so weird how we have such poor audience retention. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Anyways, uh, so yeah, there's now uh, what here's like a deafening roar echoes throughout the caverns as the uh, clear fluid erupts from the ground. Clear fluid, not red. Yep, clear fluid. Okay. <laughs> you doing okay over there, Kelly? I'm doing great. <laughs> um, can, can I taste the fluid? You sure can. <laughs> you sure can. Do that's, I need a roll a or, roll. or can I just? Yeah, that's absolutely. Because, <laughs> yeah, I want to try to diagnose what this might be. There's a lot of clear fluids in the world. It could be water. It could be Sprite. It could be any number of things between. Um, so I, I just want to taste this and see. So I'm good at perception. So yep. does that mean I roll four and take the highest two? 
Is that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, 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 no. You oh, got to have distinct okay. pairs of dice. You take the highest pair. The highest pair. Yeah. Okay. Are there, are there, is there a way to distinguish between the pairs that you have? Yes, I have two brown ones and two... Uh, Not brown. Creamy, colored dice here. Uh, oh, yeah, of course. So Sweet. All right. Yeah, so like if the brown pair is higher, take the brown, the right. higher pair. But if right. you roll like a six brown and a six creamy, syrup, like you don't take those 12. Okay, gotcha. Oh, I got a four and a six. A four and a six. Okay, so you take the six. As you let some of the fluid puddle in your hands, you know that it's not entirely clear, but instead has a small yellowish tinge to it. You taste it and notice that it tastes like plasma. Hmm. I really hate to interrupt. Are you wearing your own podcast T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. Okay, that's free advertisement. I to bring that to up know. earlier. That's a sick shirt. <laughs> let's let's move on. Uh, yeah. All right. So yeah, uh, you, you taste plasma. It tastes a bit plasmatic to me, but not terrible. <laughs> There's worse tastes, I'm sure. I don't know. Okay. The uh the I've tasted worse plasma. <laughs> I don't know. The hospital told me to stop breaking in, so I can't do that anymore. Let's see. So we know this thing is alive and that it it more or less bleeds. Um in in terms of like I don't have a good spatial concept of where we are. Is there like is this like a cavern or is this more of like a tunnel is there like a place we could theoretically go there's tunnels in all direction but from all the blood coming out from the sides of the chasm that you fell into you see it pooling into channels that go down one particular pathway let me recap here for a sec so we like we went to some coordinates in our ship yes they took us to sort of like the edge of this blood lake which we ended up on a sort of island yeah. And then we stuck some appendages into a slot. Yeah. Which caused us to relocate to a chasm. What, 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 no. What's the gap? I'm... So what you're missing, Kelly, what you're missing yeah. is that when you made the uh, when you did the ritual on the altar there, it opened up a hole in the ocean that blood started right. draining ah. into. Oh, oh, oh. Right. Right. That, yeah, that was our that was our cliffhanger. Yeah. OK. And so we, we were, and so we, fi we finished the cliffhanger on the edge of the chasm. As you fell into it. As we fell into it. So yeah. we began our adventure at the bottom of this chasm. Yep. Uh, on a sort of shoreline of this rushing blood. Yes. And caused it to gush some delicious syrupy liquid. Yep. And now we are deciding whether we want to follow the obvious path of the raging river through this canyon. Yes. Right, because if we tried to go upstream, it would just be like, I mean, since this up. river is in a chasm, like upstream is just kind of where we started from, right? Yes, it's all pooling at the hole that you guys are in. So right intuitively, now. we should go downstream. That would be the idea. So because now my unique talents that do not need oxygen to breathe. So I think Pego is going to mention. Perhaps this is a good time to remind you that I can function briefly as a boat. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I feel like I want to encourage, um, I'm going to go, I was going to say face down, but I don't see the reason for that because I'm kind of just a big rectangular box. So I'm just going to kind of lay face up in the water and encourage <laughs> my... <laughs> Come there... with me if you want to float this river of blood. Um, just for aesthetic purposes, are there pieces or like panels of Pego that can like fold out to like make them more into the shape of a watercraft rather than so boxy? No. Negative. This is why I only function briefly as a boat. <laughs> <laughs> Everything functions briefly as a boat. Yeah. He are briefer all than you board. think. <laughs> uh i feel okay i feel like the mechanism by which pego works is is sort of because i have 
uh, as has been established, Pego has a sort of trap door hole situation happening, which would trap air, which would make them buoyant. So it would make them what? Bu- buoyant, buoyant, buoyant. How do you pronounce that? <laughs> I would say buoyant, but also I know Americans get made fun of for the way that we pronounce buoy um, instead of boy, which is so how... Boy- so buoyant is a thing that people are going to not make fun of anyone for. See, buoyant, this is the problem with yeah. being Canadian on the internet is that you see people making fun of Americans and half the time you get to join in and half the time you have to quietly withdraw. Mm-hmm. So when it's like, yeah, you know, these people don't have healthcare and love guns you're like yeah that's that <laughs> dumb as hell and then when they're like yeah these uh people are uh like they have oh what's the thing that we do they're the same racist like oh they've got all, all their land got, from the native yeah. americans or they've got this tipping culture and i'm like who hey who who and then but then you run into things when someone from australia is like what's up with americans like the level of water in their toilet and i'm like <laughs> hmm, I don't know. I don't know where I stand on this. <laughs> uh, and the enough. sugary bread, too. I couldn't figure that one out. I'm still a little unsure. I think we have American style toilets and I think we have American style bread. I think bread as in like, like just normal. Yeah, like, apparently like American bread? bread is very sugary and people. Who well, that was the thing. Like, wasn't that the whole thing? That was the whole thing recently with Subway, how their bread can't technically like scientifically be classified as bread because there's too much sugar in it. I don't know if there's a scientific classification of bread. Sorry, I think it where would we're, we're trying to describe how Pego floats. The genus, <laughs> yeah. the genus bread. Um, yeah. So I feel like Pego can create buoyancy. Can in, in fleece, can, can increase, Pego can increase Pego's ability to float. By it's 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 a ballast situation. You just take more air into the hatch, and there will be enough floatiness to carry two humans. And as long as the rapids aren't too rapid, it won't tip over sideways. Like I would be fine, but my people riding me might flip in. All right. We could maybe so. be generous to say Pego has a couple of handles on its face. <laughs> I like that. You can hold on to. There you go. All right. So I uh, have been astride Pego since the moment they said the word boat. <laughs> 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 I have been looking for an excuse to get this close to them since I stuck my leg leg appendage in their face hole so (laughs) i am so so excited about this i am imagining uh since we were looking for things to hold on to i'm imagining the uh the pegging arm just like slowly coming back out (laughs) it's like it's like being on the subway everyone's just kind of holding on to the 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 pegging arm (laughs) that's what i would have done that's what i would have done if like their arm had not been bent but they're still hiding it so like because because i think both arms come out the front end of pego the jacket is covering the extremely damaged pegging appendage (laughs) and is probably being held in place by the only slightly damaged sampling of r2d2 appendage which that's kind of in the bottom area and the top area has handles for the human crew members to hold on to so, All yeah, right. normally you might have some vertical appendage subway poles to hang on to, but it's like, though it's kind of like the situation where you get on public transit or those have been taking and you have to hold a more awkward handle. Like, and you're like, oh, okay, I guess this is what's happening. All right. So, you guys get on boat pego. <laughs> and, yep. and that's that's the plan here. Get on boat pego. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, boat, boat of them get on. <laughs> now he's he's uh they are pego the pegging rowboat instead of uh robot. Oh. Hey, yeah, there, there, <laughs> go. there it is row 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 your bot <laughs> <laughs> no can uh, i use my crutch to kind of like push you sure along? can yeah okay. the current of the blood river is 
swift enough, but you're able to add even more speed with your uh, your sort of uh, primitive ore, and you coast or what? quickly, uh, quickly but gently. Or what, Josh? Either or. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> uh, you said down the river. And Are you using your pegging appendage as a rudder? <laughs> no, because as has been established, it's, it's, the peg, the all the, the appendages side. are facing up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. I, you know, it would have been very good design to put one appendage on the front and one appendage on the back in, in <laughs> for these boat type situations. Mm. Um, I mean, but. That's yeah. I feel, feel like it's just like coming, right? In general, for a love robot, having an appendage on either side is probably just good practice. But. It probably is, and this is why the the Pego Model Three is you know is is somewhat limited. But when you get the Pego Model X, it's going to be like a whole new world, just eh? from from all angles, just like a biblically accurate pegging, <laughs> pegging robot. That's right. Perfect. So as you coast gently down the river. You see machines pushed into the flesh that appear to be extracting the blood and pumping it upwards back towards the surface. And as you continue further down the river, you see a bright white light, not something as uh, as warm and inviting as sunlight, but something cold and artificial. Yeah, I thought the GM was going to be more original, but I feel like you lifted cold and artificial directly from how I described some of the dialogue. <laughs> in this story, so. Is the, is cold the light and blunt. cold and blunt? Yes. Is, is the light blunt? Would we describe it? Yeah, we call it we call it blunt light. Mm-hmm. Oh, so. OK. I am detecting that this light source is at only five degrees Celsius and at. 80% bluntness. <laughs> Do with that information what you will. Let's see. Five degrees Celsius is like four. Oh, God. Four yeah, right. degrees Fahrenheit. This is one of those things 45? where you jump very yeah. aggressively on board against, yeah, what the fuck is with those people? And they're yeah, stupid 40 degrees. degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. Yeah. Don't get into any other measurements because I went to the doctor today and they're like, yeah, you're 85 kilograms. And I'm like, oh, I really should have internalized what that means. But <laughs> I kind of I kind of needed in pounds. <laughs> so Canada operates kind of on like a mix of the two. We operate on the only possible thing worse than the imperial system, which is an inscrutable hybrid of the imperial and metric <laughs> systems where you walk 10 feet and drive 10 kilometers because that's just how it operates. Yeah. And also it depends how old you are because I had someone tell me recently, it's like, yeah, like you just go to the thing. It's like two miles down the road. I'm like, what the fuck is a mile? But that's <laughs> what 50 year olds know. And I, uh, I've i lost my train of thought. I'm just Perfect. so angry about. Yeah. The so anyways, yes, the light is cold and blunt as Pego so nicely put it. Affirmative. Yar, I think we should steer towards that cold, blunt light. It reminds me of me mother. <laughs> and then, McGilstern, I must remind you that due to all my appendages do being on the deck side of the ship, if you will, that you, with the as the holder of the crutch, are the only one steering. <laughs> Yeah, I, I agree. I, I'll do it. I just, I, you know, I've heard that consent is important, and I wanted to ask for the consent of, of yourself <laughs> and the crew before I, I bring you over there. What, what, what be your thoughts on the, on the matter? Well, as I have been programmed with the same libertarian training that the crew has been instructed on, <laughs> you must know well, Ensign McIlstern, that the key is to ask for permission to do the thing and then immediately do it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps this is why you are still an ensign and not an admiral captain. <laughs> I, so I'm I'm very embarrassed by being called out like this, so I immediately just start steering towards the, the light. I don't even think about whether it's right or wrong. Pego quietly, you, like internally, how, feels proud because they have successfully negged the person they are trying to hook up. With. <laughs> how, uh, 
how much of a choice do we really have about whether or not to go towards it? It seems like we're just kind of floating down. Yeah, it's like a 10 foot the... wide river, so you can be slightly <laughs> to the left or slightly to the right, which is crucially important. But yes, let's let's uh, let's keep this going. Uh, we must have a ton of agency. There's no way we're being railroaded. Not at all. No, lots of agency. Uh, as uh, you approach light, it gets brighter and brighter naturally. But as you are almost blinded by the white light, you see a black hooded figure in front of the light. Tall, frail, thin. And all of that upon a small mound of an island that the river ends at. Please update on what is happening. I have, <laughs> my sensors have been blinded by the light. <laughs> Wrapped up like a douche, another boner in the night. <laughs> I don't know why Pego got the lyrics wrong. Particularly, it's an indication that their systems might be failing from all the water damage. <laughs> water damage, fucking <laughs> regular damage. Again, serving briefly as a boat. And <laughs> wouldn't a love robot be like pretty waterproof? Yeah, but there's a difference well between fluid? there's a difference between getting wet and submersing well, yourself. Yeah, this this actually comes back to something that we discuss on the show sometimes. The difference between something being weatherproof and waterproof. If it's weatherproof, it'll keep water out. But if it's waterproof, it'll keep it out under pressure, like you would want for the hull of a vessel. So that I guess comes down to. Uh, yeah, Pegos. Are, Pegos are you waterproof or weatherproof? Correct. I am weatherproof and not <laughs> waterproof. And on the same note, I should note that I have all season tires, <laughs> which are not necessarily good winter tires. I mean, dread. <laughs> I so, am so happy that we have a professional like answer to that question. <laughs> Go on. So I think it explains it really well because like. Pego is d clearly designed to get wet, but it's just there's there's layers there's of wet and layer there's levels to wetness and pressure that just they there's a difference between a shipwreck podcast and a you know like a horny podcast sometimes. I don't know. We did we did do an episode on a boat called the Muff Diver. I probably mentioned that one before already, but that was a that was a short one. Um, but uh, that was. Uh, the horniest one i think on the show so far well we'll have to hope you uh you get better more horny boats in the future yeah hopefully that schooner makes an appearance in your next episode <laughs> i know yeah, I'm... And if, if you're watching or listening to this do your part do your part as a good citizen and go out and sink the horniest boat you can find to provide more content for them <laughs> because you know, it, if there's if there aren't any shipwrecks anymore, what are they going to record about? You know, if people mm -hmm. get too safe, so you need to go out and actually do this kind of, yeah, this kind of uh, we have content we have, based terrorism. We have thought about that before. It's like, what if we what if we do this for years and years and years, and we run out of content? We're going to have to start making our own. <laughs> Perfect. Start just sinking uh, Russian billionaires' yachts. Yeah, could do that. So. Right now, we have this dark figure that we're approaching. Is that correct? Yes. And, uh, Pego, you are taking on blood at this point. Cannot confirm. I do not see the darkness or lightness of figures. <laughs> That's very progressive of you, Pego. Well, I am a fairly recent model, if not the newest model. <laughs> Well, this newest model is taking on blood, so you guys notice that you're starting to dip a little bit as you approach the small little island. Okay, can I, like, crutch us faster? You sure can. Uh, I'm We're gonna get dipping, you to roll so, like, I'm actively though. losing my Your water tightness? Like, am yeah. I actually... Okay, so I am, I am dying here. I got an eight. <laughs> you got an eight? You are able to quickly paddle the Pego boat to the shoreline before they take on too much blood and begin to sink. I have a you question. You bump up just against a, it. Just a, just a, a, uh, a navigation question. Yeah. Is, is the crutch being used as a paddle or as a pole, like on a keel boat? Are we pushing off the bottom or is this functioning as a paddle? Yes. <laughs> Cause if it's a pole, then we could just probably get off 
of Pego and 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 Wade. Yeah, right, to the like island. to get off of on Pego, all right. <laughs> 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 Luckily, you'll never have to, to know the answer. The same thing. <laughs> <laughs> you'll never have to know the answer to that because you guys bump up against the island and are able to disembark safely. Okay, okay so they're able to disembark safely, but I kind of bump up against an island and I'm just progressively sinking. Is that kind of yeah, at the moment? Yes. <laughs> yeah, because they've they've pulled me up from dry ground before while I was empty, but if I am continuously filling with water, I don't know if they're gonna. Is it going to be as easy for them to pull me out of this water? Or am I too? I'm sure if they work together as a team and do a strength roll, they'll you know, be able to pull you out just fine. You know, something something I I learned during my career is the Marines. They say you never leave a man behind. But how does that apply to they them robot? It's actually immaterial because I was never a Marine, so I. I've never felt the urge to follow that advice. <laughs> Where exactly did you serve? I know this is maybe not the time as I am actively sinking, but I, my honesty module forces me to ask what the exact circumstances of your military service were, Admiral Captain. I, I swore I would never, I would never discuss this, but have you ever heard of the Gulf of Tonkin oh, incident? Oh shit. <laughs> Searching memory banks. <laughs> memory banks have been damaged by unknown liquid. Please fill in. Yeah. I I nod like knowingly. I'll, I'll I'll keep it I'll keep it as brief as possible because I think we have to go talk to this gentleman first. Uh, but uh, I I kind of started the Vietnam War. Um, <laughs> that was me, uh, unfortunately. Um. And it didn't. It didn't end very well uh, for 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 me and my people. But uh, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, so let's let's go discuss uh, with this uh, eerie looking figure over here. As uh, as Pego continues <laughs> we to establish say, canonically what year it is. It is the year twenty <laughs> XX. <laughs> okay, so by that math. Um, the the character of Whaleback <laughs> Willie has to be like forty eight plus XX years old, or yes, okay. I think you're looking for uh, for a logic where there is none, especially when you continue to sink. Okay. <laughs> I cannot help it. You might say that logic is my white whale. I love logic and will stop at nothing in the pursuit of logic. All right, I'm going to roll a strength to try and get uh, Pego out of the water. All right. By yourself, no help. <laughs> and And the hooded figure is just kind of standing there watching us do this. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled an eight. You're old and eight. All right. Um, Tanner, are you going to, is Willback Willie going to assist with this or? I guess so. <laughs> uh, see, my strength, I'm bad at strength. All right. So I've got my two, my two pairs. Well, good thing you have someone helping you who has like, I think, multiple prosthetic appendages. Like. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I rolled a five and. A seven. All right, so you got to take the five because you're not good at it. And you said you rolled an eight, Nicole? Yes. You guys are, with great effort, able to drag Pego onto the shore, leaving a trail of the leaking blood that they were taking on seeping from the small holes in its joints. Yeah, I think I'm going to probably uh, activate my drainage systems because... Given how tenuously they picked me up before, they're probably not going to be able to pick me up full of liquid as they've <laughs> yeah. exhausted themselves, dragging me out of the river. So I'm going to do them a favor by draining them, but I will still need help up, I think. <laughs> All right. So the uh, the hooded figure seems to wait patiently, although he has begun to tap his foot as the uh, fluid is drained out of Pego and you guys help write him uh, her, them again. Right. Um... So wait, this is like a hooded fig. Like I'm, I'm kind of picturing 
and tell me if I'm wrong, I'm sort of picturing that like Norm Macdonald family guy death figure. <laughs> like just a robe uh, that's floating. Like, do I see, do, you see would any of us, no. what does a figure look like? That's my question. Thin, emaciated, almost skeletal at this point, but still tough leathery skin stretched over the bones. But they're robed? They are robed, yes. So we can perceive their emaci- emaciation through their robe. Like we can see their hands, I, yes. I assume, something hands like that. Oh, it's sort of like see, a yeah. bathrobe. We can see their head, their hands, their feet. You can't see their face, but you can see their hands and their feet. Okay, so that's why we see yeah. the feet tapping. Yeah. Okay. So yes. it's like hood up, but it's sort yeah. of like a snuggie with really short arms and not quite covering the Or like feet. a like an yeah. Emperor Palpatine type thing where we can see like extremities. We see the chin and the hands. <laughs> Did we see Palpatine's feet? I'm gonna go look up on DeviantArt Palpatine feet to see if anything I, shows up. I thought you were gonna ch- I thought you were gonna check wiki feet for that. <laughs> <laughs> That would have been a much better joke, so I'm going to repeat that, and I'm going to edit in. <laughs> hey, I'm going to go look at Wikifeed for Emperor Palpatine. <laughs> nailed it. Absolutely nailed it. All right, I'm going to approach the figure and say, I'm going to go, E-R, uh, where, who be, who be you, and why, what, me? <laughs> <laughs> While- the figure... While this is happening, I am. You know, I must I, say, <laughs> if at the expense of gushing a little, uh, Ensign McGillstern, I have always admired how articulate and well spoken <laughs> you are. <laughs> as uh, as that's happening, I am I am positioning myself so that Helm McGillstern is is directly between me and the figure. <laughs> uh, tactical, very very good. Uh, the figure thrusts a bony finger in your face, screaming, you damnable creatures, you've doomed us all. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I hate when that happens. <laughs> I'd be real sorry about that. <laughs> well, we must be going. <laughs> <laughs> um. Can I ask the figure who he means by we? Is there some larger we that he's referring to or just us? You damnable creatures who opened the chasm and flooded this beast with all its essence that we have spent a millennia draining, freeing ourselves from the threat of its all-consuming maw, and you have drained it all right back in here. Oh. I go, Yar, well, that really seems to be like the natural way of things, so I can't say I feel too bad about that. You (laughs) you don't feel bad. You will feel bad when this planet emerges ready to consume all life in this universe. This planet is now fully operational. (laughs) This this could end up benefiting us if this is a sort of Roko's Basilisk situation. I am craving the sweet obl- oblivion of death, so I'm I'm kind of okay with this. Because what is death but one more hole to stick our leg appendages into? <laughs> so true. Uh, uh, so deep, so profound. Um, I'm going to get all three of you to uh, roll a perception check. Okay, and while we're in suspense over that... I got an eight. Eight, okay. Uh, oh, wow! Oh, 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 oh. Uh, another Eight critical guys. fail, Snake Eyes. Yeah. Uh, I have an eleven, so that's good. All right, all right. So we'll we'll go from uh, top to bottom here. Uh, so whale back, Willie. You spot behind the figure what that illuminating light is appears to be a sort of. Uh, I don't really know how to describe this. A platform that has a floating. What appears to be a starship key floating behind it. And Helm the Kilstern, I love your name. It's, it cracks me up every time. You see, although wound and bound in what appears to be tendons and muscle sinew, a uh, old starship. Pego, you notice what you think 
is the priest reaching for a weapon in its robes. Wow, that sounds like a good time to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> um, okay, I, so I, I've been I've been stood up, right? Yep, yep, you've been stood up. So we're all standing here at the sort of the at the pristine feet of this. Can you describe the feet of this character? We didn't ask you to describe the feet of this character. <laughs> yeah, you sure didn't, and I won't. <laughs> okay, so then in that case, we're gonna just uh, put up this result I got for Emperor Palpatine feet. Oh, okay, perfect. <laughs> and once again, this is no use to you if you're listening to this. <laughs> we can confirm perfect. that Elper Palpatine does wear boots and such does not have visible feet. But as a bonus for the people who are watching and not listening, I'm going to put up this other result I got for Emperor Palpatine feet. Uh, which <laughs> Jesus is attached to an, uh, an article that says Emperor Palpatine has a foot fetish, which I have not read, but... Boy, am I excited <laughs> to read it once we're done this uh, recording. Uh. <laughs> oh, boy. That better be the uh, the thumbnail, Kelly. Yeah. So I must confess I was not paying attention while I was looking up Emperor Palpatine feet. So <laughs> this this very impatient uh, robed figure who seems to have a lot of power to kill us um, has activated some kind of a uh, battle station that is totally unrelated to a Death Star? Uh, no, he has said that you guys, by opening the chasm, have flooded blood back into the creature that they've been trying to drain for a millennia, giving it life so, again. So, so exactly see, like a Death Star. We see the ship. To be honest, see, I was not paying attention during Star Wars <laughs> either. So We see the ship, we see the key, and we see him reaching for a weapon. Well, Pego sees the uh. figure reaching for a weapon. Uh, okay, well, I'm gonna run for the ship. Well, I'm gonna crutch for the ship. <laughs> I I know that Helm McKeelstern can't move very quickly, so I'm gonna draw my cutlass and All right. confront the hooded figure. All right, and what's, what's your plan here, Pego, since you see them reaching for a weapon? So I see them reaching for a weapon. So the, the ship, so... If I can understand the spatial, so like there's us, and then between us and the ship is this figure. Yes. And um, Helma Kilstern has bolted for the ship. Yep, they're 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 legging it, and they're 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 pegging and legging it. They're pegging it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Whaleback Willie has sorry, Whaleback Willie did what? Drew his cutlass. I, I have I have drawn my cutlass to confront right. the hooded figure, and. I am having to make a decision here. But like I don't see what kind of weapon is being drawn. I just see kind of like a hand going into like a, yeah, a, into the a lapel or a jacket pocket. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And I also see now looking up at the camera that my comb Oh no, he's back. I'm good. <laughs> okay, so but I, yeah, so I don't see what kind of weapon it is. No, no, you just see it. I feel like I am f I want to believe in my ability to resist like both gunfire and blunt weapons. Okay. So what about cold and blunt weapons? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I said blunt because a short, a sword is not blunt. I meant to say like melee weapons, but there you go. <laughs> I just, I'm blunt pilled. I'm always thinking about bluntness. <laughs> I, I feel like the best course of action is like, we're going to do but good cop, bad cop. So, Whaleback Willie has drawn a sharp weapon. Yep. Or how how sharp is this cutlass? It's is it's it blunt? not that it's it's not that it's particularly uh, sharp. It's it's more that it's it's very rusty. You wouldn't want to get cut with it. Uh, but it's it's not particularly well taken care of. So it it hasn't been sharpened in a bit. Okay. So while let me just simplify this. While Whaleback Willie has drawn a cutlass, which is clearly a weapon. I'm going to try to solve this problem through the power of love. Okay. So I'm going to do my best to roll toward the hooded figure oh, as no. sort of the good cop here. You know, sort of like a yeah. mean cop, sexy cop situation. And okay. I'm I'm going to say, Mysterious hooded figure, perhaps there are other ways to solve our differences because I am programmed in so many ways to love and i definitely have had no 
physical impairments in my ability to love. And when you think about it, if you don't want to do this the love way, we can do this the cutlass way. And I sort of like, I try to do like a quick like motion to my partner, but it's sort of like a rotation on my <laughs> treads toward Whaleback Willie of like, yeah, this is this is your alternative. All right, so I need you to roll persuasion. Hell yeah. How am I a persuasion? Oh, I'm bad at persuasion. How did that happen? All right, we're going full screen because the partial screen dice cam was not working. All Hell right, so yeah. So my bad nine. is nine. Yeah, yeah, fuck, that's right. We are never All doing right. the split screen again. The uh, figure continues to draw what it was out of his pocket. And you see that it isn't actually a weapon, but instead... It's a new dildo for mine. <laughs> Sorry, I, I don't want to interrupt you. It is a giant, thick, what looks to be a manual. And he holds it out to you. Oh, I understand your misunderstanding, but I do not need a manual. I need a them you will. <laughs> uh, ha, 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 ha. Boo. Boo indeed. He tries to step towards Pego and Whaleback Willie and attempts to grasp Whaleback Willie with his other arm. I am not having any of that. So I am gonna I'm gonna take a swing at that arm with my with my cutlass. All right. Uh, if you could the roll... manual holding arm, <laughs> no, the one that's reaching out for him. Oh, OK, I need you to roll a reaction. Ten, ten with a flourish that had almost left your weary world weary bones. You slice the arm clean off and the man Ooh. shrieks and drops the manual onto the fleshy island. You're all on as he drops to his knees, clutching the stump that used to be an arm. <laughs> Still Blood spurts everywhere. <laughs> he screams. I, I want to say my. Fools. Now, because I am the good cup, I want to look down empathetically, as empathetically as I can, <laughs> uh, without my empathy chip. I want to look down at this road figure and say, "Oh no! You know, I understand. It is a challenge to lose an appendage, but someone who isn't me." has recently experienced injury to a very, very, very important appendage. And let me tell you, there is still life to live. You just have to adjust. And I attempt not to do the robot equivalent of blushing or... <laughs> oh, hi, Sasha. The man screaming begins to crawl... Towards. Are we certain this is a man, this road figure? Because we tend to assume in this group, not naming names, <laughs> that a lot of figures are men. His uh, cloak, like the, the hood falls off. You see it is a has long, stringy, silvery hair and a long, stringy, silvery beard. It is mm -hmm. undoubtedly a man who is, again, screaming in pain and horror and trying to drag himself towards his star vessel. So when you say undoubtedly a man, like what what <laughs> what makes a man to you, Josh? I don't think we have enough time to discuss that, Kelly. <laughs> In fairness to anyone listening or watching, Josh has been playing a lot of Hogwarts Legacy. So <laughs> yeah, if there's one thing I'm known for, it's my love of young adult fiction. <laughs> All right, so this guy is is wounded, uh, presumably bleeding heavily. Yes. Dragging himself laboriously towards the starship that Helma Keelstern is arriving at. I feel like we should try to get on the ship before he does. Yeah, I'm already there. Yeah, so, okay, so Helma Keelstern is already at the ship. Okay. Yep. And, and notices that there is a, uh, a lock on the door with right. uh, this, a key needed. This one-armed bandit... Um, <laughs> is like bleeding and very upset and crawling towards the ship. 
And and Whaleback Willie has decided after severing the arm of this person to start moving towards the ship, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Both of so you neglecting I'm, the key. Right. Well, I haven't started moving yeah. yet. Yeah. So I feel like we've in terms of the eternal uh the dichotomy of them, which is the good cop, bad cop. Clearly we have gone bad cop. <laughs> so I don't feel like there's a big reason to maintain the the kayfabe, if you will, of <laughs> of good robot here. And as I am, you know, whirring toward the ship, I kind of just want to do that sort of like Red Dead Redemption looting of this body in front of me. <laughs> uh, because they've been like fully if there's one thing I if there's one thing I and Pego have learned from Red Dead Redemption, it's that once you blow someone's limb off, they will just lay there and die. So they're effectively a dead body, meaning I am going to try to loot them with what remains of my sampling arm as I kind of roll over them. Uh, Other than the manual that they had tried to pass off to you, they don't have anything on them. Well, then I grab the manual. (laughs) The manual says, um, it's titled with, in the event of... Fluid returning. Turn to page 69. Nice. <laughs> wow, what a completely ordinary page to turn to. <laughs> because Pego has not been programmed with that knowledge. <laughs> so, and because every sexual situation Pego ends up with is more of an 11 than a 69. So. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess since I'm back closer to it, I assume... Pego's limb situation does not allow them to hold a book and turn the pages. Um, so I guess I should take that responsibility. I guess you should. All right. So I'm going to take the book and open it to page 69. In big red letters, it merely says, That's abandon good. all hope. Luckily, I was not programmed with hope. <laughs> Is the guy still screaming through all of this? Oh, yeah. He's still, like, not dead. And still crawling towards the ship. I feel like we can't let that happen. And it was very rude of me to cut off his arm. And it would be even more rude of me to leave him alive to suffer. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm also kind of picking up on this. And I kind of realized that we've made a lot of assumptions based on the fact that this person has facial hair. And I say, uh, dying human. I apologize for having not asked earlier, but what are your pronouns? All you hear is shrieking. <laughs> and I announce to the rest of the crew, uh, their programs are ah! and <laughs> and that. Ah! <laughs> I feel like I may have fucked up the you did the timing did. of my robot button. You, you We're just gonna take did. that one again. I have determined that their programs are and <laughs> you fucked it up twice Is again. Is that better? I would never fuck up. <laughs> so, do we have the we saw we saw the key somewhere, right? Behind uh on like a floating platform or on the platform where it's like floating delicately as okay. if no gravity is there. So, where there was a floating key? Yeah. And you told us about this? Yes. Yeah, I don't think you did because I don't I don't remember listening to that, so it must not have happened. <laughs> luckily, so, luckily, uh Wellback Willie saw it. Yeah, I want to go grab the key while keeping a wary eye on the the wounded uh formerly hooded figure. All right. So which uh which hand are you gonna reach out for it with? Um hold on, which one is my um, I'm going to grab it with my left hand just to be safe. Your salad tongs hand? Yeah. That was a good call because as you put your uh, salad tong hand into the light, you feel it heating up like it would have been a obscene amount of heat onto your bare flesh if you would have reached in with that hand. Yeah, but those salad tongs are durable. They have that They're crazy durable. silicone that's durable yeah. up to like yeah. 800 degrees. And you t- pluck the key from its floating mount, and despite all the heat that was in the light, the key feels cool to the touch. Okay. Would you say it feels cold and blunt? 
<laughs> oh, shut the fuck up. <laughs> so I I know that Helm McKeelstern enjoys things like this. So I'm going to take the key to Helm McKeelstern and have them find somewhere to put it. All somewhere right. Somewhere to stick it, if you will. Well, Helm McKeelstern has observed that there is a keyhole in which to push the key into. Yar. is. He was built for this, and I like shake, kind of like my hands, kind of shaking as I like. This keyhole was made for me. (laughs) Slide slide the key gently into the hole, but I like kind of at the last minute, kind of panic, and I kind of jam it in a little bit. But I (laughs) then I turn it. The uh, ship's bottom opens up, and a platform to step into the ship lowers to the to the three people or two people and a robot standing there. Uh, yeah, I board the ship. I'm, I'm, I'm going to just uh, be uh, rear guard for a second here, and I'm, I'm going to usher Pego onto the ship and just check and make sure our, our armless friend is still staying a safe distance away. So assuming that Ensign McKeelstern has... Sorry, I, me as a player, I'm not assuming Hal McKeelstern's rank. Assuming Hal McKeelstern has boarded the ship and is sort of out of earshot. And now that I've developed a sort of uh, Mm -hmm. whispering rapport with Whaleback Willie, I wonder what it sounds like in this filter if I whisper. Oh, Whaleback Willie. Oh, God. I use your name and know your rank. Yes, we've become friends. It's awful. And Well, we're committed to the bit, so we have to do it. While I am normally accustomed to never leaving a gender non-specific human behind, I will proceed as instructed also due to self-preservation. And I, I just kind of roll on board the ship. Like, I've told Whaleback Willie that it's because I am doing it as instructed, but mostly it's because I'm horny for Helma Gilstern. All right. I'm I'm going to step onto the ship as well. Um, while uh, holding up a, a middle finger to, to, our, <laughs> to, to the wounded man shrieking on, on the floor as the, as the door slowly closes. <laughs> All right. In the, in the cockpit, uh, Helmet Ayo. Ayo. You see that there are uh, autopilot coordinates punched in. I just start mashing Earth. buttons. <laughs> <laughs> I need you to. Uh, I need you to roll, Nicole. You're just gonna roll bravery. I am very bad at that. <laughs> so I got. Oh, I got a nine and and a seven. All right, so. In your flourish of pressing buttons, bravely going forward where no one shall, you somehow manage to start the engines up, and you feel the sinew and muscle that traps the ship breaking away as the ship activates its autopilot and begins to soar through the caverns, up through the chasm that you fell through, and before long, it exits the atmosphere. As you see from the back cameras, the planet slowly crumbling, seemingly from the inside, and tentacles bursting from the crust of the, the, the planet. Looks like almost like a monster is emerging from the planet itself. Is there a nuke or something we can fire at this fucking thing? There is not. Well, okay. I look in the sort of spaceship equivalent rearview mirror of this planet and go, well... I am sure glad we don't have to deal with any of that bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> and then scene. You guys ended life on the universe. Uh, it, you know, these things happen. <laughs> yeah, it is what it is. <laughs>